Mortal Kombat movie review. The forces of Outworld want Earth. Partially because Outworld is a barren wasteland, probably also on account of the fact that the property values are pretty low on account of the houses being nicknamed outhouses. The only way the forces of Outworld can get Earth is by defeating the forces of Earth in the Mortal Kombat tournament ten times in a row. And they've already done it nine times. The only way we are going to avoid being slaves to the Emperor of Outworld is if the three fighters from Earth somehow manage to win this time. They are Liu Kang, who is out to avenge his brother, even though I understand it would have made a lot more sense if it had been, I think, his grandfather or something. Kung Lao, I believe the character name is. We also have Johnny Cage, who really just wants to prove that he can actually fight, you know, because people keep saying that his movies are, you know, all wire work and that he's Jet Li. And finally, we have Sonya Blade, a tough cop who just wants to avenge her partner. And she's as... all of the characters are basically flat as boards. They have very minimal motivation and that's really, you know, it's not about the characters here. They're just, they're fighters. The movie is based on the very popular video game franchise and even when you don't consider the tremendous difficulty of doing a proper satisfying film adaptation of the subgenre of fighting games, games where the entire gameplay is one-on-one -on -one fighting. It's actually a pretty good job of an adaptation. As a movie itself, it's not necessarily that good. If you don't watch this thinking that it's an adaptation of a fighting game, you might not like it that much, but with it in mind, they pull it off. And I'm not a fan of the game series myself, but there's evidently a lot of references. My girlfriend's a fan, she pointed out a lot of references. And they actually do kind of work them in there without, you know, mostly without them being too obvious. It still feels organic to the movie itself. One could complain that part of the game series popularity is based on the ultraviolence and the movie is rated PG-13, so there's really no violence, little blood, gore, but anyway, the basic point of a movie like this is a lot of good fighting. And the movie does a pretty good job of delivering on that. Sometimes the fighting can be somewhat awkwardly cut and choreographed. You can really tell that Brigitte Wilson, who plays Sonya Blade, is not a martial artist. She is an actress. And even though it is also sometimes awkward when you see Johnny Cage fight, I think he can actually fight in real life. Also partially because if my name was Lyndon Ashby, I would learn how to, you know, take care of myself if someone wanted to kick my ass. The... We have a pretty good villain in the evil sorcerer of Outworld, Shang Tsung, who, again, I believe is an actual mar martial artist and He's just, he hams it up big time and just really sells this over-the-top character and it's just a lot of fun to watch. Johnny Cage can be really annoying because he's got a lot of really cheesy one-liners and you just gotta suffer through them. There's not really anything else to it. We have the... Lightning God Raiden, played by B-movie star, if you can call that, 
Christopher Lambert, who really doesn't get to do any action as such, but he does have some fun lines, and he's sort of the Ben Kenobi of the film. He's just there to guide the three heroes. For having sections that are kind of one note, the film, and somewhat awkward pacing at times, the film is never really boring. It doesn't get too bogged down in any one thing. There's a lot of action really, you know, secluded into certain parts of the movie, and, you know, Paul W. S. Anderson, the director of this, usually does include far too much action, especially in specific sections of his films, but here it actually does work out. It, the fighting never gets to be downright boring, and there is still some sense of threat, even though we have a lot of wins for the good guys. And, you know, I could go into more Paul W. Anderson cliches. He does the anti-climax thing some here, and I could go into that for a long time. I won't in this video. This is actually the one time where he does a pretty good job of adapting someone else's intellectual property, you know. This is the one where he pays homage to it, and it feels like, you know, if there was ever a movie based on a fighting game, this is kind of what it would look like, you know. It wouldn't be terribly different from this, at least, you know, most of the movies based on fighting games are just dreadful. The acting is a bit varied, but really, you know, the actors aren't given a lot to work with, and again, it's really not about the characters. The effects are reasonable for the time. You know, this came out in like 95, 96, and for that, it does a pretty good job. You know, one of the main attractions as far as effects go is Prince Goro, the four-armed beast who goes back and forth strangely between, you know, pretty decent dialogue and just unintelligible roars. He does not move very fast and you know, for the threat he's made out to be, we don't see that much fighting capability of him. It's sort of off-screen, you know, it's hinted at that he's a really good fighter. But the effects on him are not bad, really. And, you know, there's a pretty good level of expression to both arms and face. And from what I know, he looks a lot like the one from, you know, the games. But yeah, the effects in general, reasonable. And sometimes you can kind of tell where they ran out of budget and they had to not film something. You know, parts of this are kind of awkwardly filmed and edited. Because they couldn't quite do something or it didn't look good from another angle. Stuff like that. Anyway, about how this relates to the games, you know, there are a lot of references I already pointed out. There are several characters implemented, and they tend to get something cool to do, you know. And also, the costumes and design is really well done. The, you know, the rooms of Outworld and... Just this, you know, the atmosphere is fantastic. Really, it has that post-apocalyptic feel to the ruins. And except for when they really break the atmosphere, another Paul W. Anderson cliche, it really works. You know, you really feel like they are in this fantastical place, which, by the way, they have to take a really old-timey boat that literally comes right out of a fantasy movie, a full-on fantasy movie, and yet docks at, you know, the regular harbor. 
I don't know why nobody notices it, uh, you know, notices it other than the people boarding it, but whatever. Also, didn't exactly love how Kano was, like, really just, you know, it's everyone's faux Australian. I think if Kevin Goddard, is that his name? You know, the Jag, the other roles that you don't really care about, you know. Anyway, he, every time he's on screen, he sounds really drunk. I don't think the actor was, I think it's just how he was directed to play the role. I'm told that he's obnoxious in the game as well, but yeah, just a bit too obnoxious for my taste. The, the length is also appropriate. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Going into this, this wasn't my first viewing, but I have hardly played any of the games, so I really don't know the universe other than what this film presents of it, and I'm told a lot of that is pretty accurate, and also just going into it blindly, you kind of do follow it fine, you know, it, some of the delivery of exposition is really forced, really staged, but on the whole, you know, you get to know enough about the world, the, you know, the characters, what's going on essentially, and, you know, even if you don't really know the game, you're probably gonna enjoy this if you like, excuse me, martial arts movies. And I suppose that's what there is to say. So yeah, all in all, just a fun movie if you like fighting games. And if you don't like fighting games, just steer clear, because the movie really wasn't made with you in mind at all. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.